Hello and welcome back to the Toronto website developer.com. I am Peter Jaworski, the Toronto website developer. And in this video tutorial, I want to show you what modules look like in Drupal 8. Now, if you have experience with Drupal 6 and 7, you can probably skip this tutorial. You don't need to watch it. But if you are new to Drupal 8 or want to brush up on modules, um, here's the opportunity to do so. Before we get started, you know, I'm at Toronto website developer.com. Here you can purchase my video tutorial series as I complete them. Uh, to date, you'll notice that I've got five available here conveniently on the right side. Each is only $20 Canadian, uh, and the more uh, that you buy, the more that you save, but also each purchase goes to help me to continue to develop these tutorials, keep them free and keep them frequent, so I greatly appreciate all the support thus far. Alternatively, if you can't afford the $20 but do want to help out, please just leave a thumbs up or a comment on the video. I greatly appreciate that. It helps me uh, to continue to develop these, keep them, uh, keep them improving. So with that said, I'm going to head over to Drupal.org, and as I mentioned in this video tutorial, we're going to take a look at modules. And so when I say module, what I mean is new functionality that you can add to your site. Now it's possible that you could create that functionality uh, or you can actually rely on the Drupal community, uh, which, will, which contributes code back to Drupal.org so that you can take it and you can add new functionality to your site without having to code anything yourself. Um, and the way that they do that is through what are called modules. And modules are kind of like pieces of functionality. So in this video tutorial series, we're going to be selling uh, photos on a premium uh, photo site, and we'll be relying on a module called Commerce in order to do that. So here, you'll notice I've gone to drupal.org slash download, and this is where you can find modules, themes, as well as a few other things to download, like such as translations, distributions, uh, and what have you. But here under the Drupal modules, you'll see that there's they're broken down by categories. You can look at most installed, you can look at different categories, you can look at new modules, you can look at the index. Um, and here, you can actually filter, right? So you can click search, click Drupal 8, and then these will be updated to just be Drupal 8 modules. What we can also do is up in the search bar here, search for a specific module if we know the name of what we're looking for. But rather, what we can do is go to all categories, and under administration, I know that I'm looking for a toolbar. What I'd like to be able to do is have some JavaScript where I can hover over the different categories and see the entire menu. And I know that there was a previous module for this in Drupal 7, and I'd like to see if that's the case in Drupal 8. Now here, I can actually scroll through and you can see you've got different uh, dropdowns that I can choose between actively maintained, minimally maintained, seeking co-maintainers, as well as the develop, uh, development status. And so all of this is just different filtering for you to find the module that you're looking for. This type of information becomes a little bit more pertinent once you do find that. So in terms of my search, I want to search for admin toolbar. Once I do so, you'll see that I get a whole bunch of different results and I can actually sort by them. Um, but what I'm going to do here is on the right, you can see that I can filter by. Um, and you'll see that all the different categories that come up include forms and issues, documentation, modules, themes, and groups. What I'd like to see is just the modules. So when I click on modules, all of these results are just going to be modules, and that's where you see module project here. This first one seems to be what I'm looking for, so I'm just going to click on it and take a look. And here, what you typically see on a module page is perhaps some images, but a nice description of kind of what the module does. And all of that is dependent upon what is called the maintainer. So you'll see here on the right, maintainers for admin toolbar. And these are the people that have made commits. Commits refer to um, code that's been added to the module. I won't get into the whole Git workflow um, or, or Git version control, uh, but that might be something you want to take a look at because Drupal does all of its version control through Git. So that said, uh, as I mentioned, you have this entire description, which is provided by uh, module maintainers. Beneath that, you have some project information. And this is kind of what we saw in terms of the filters. But we have this uh, maintenance status, we have the development status, module categories. So with regards to those three, the maintenance status, in terms of whether it's actively maintained, this could be an abandoned project or it could be looking for new maintainers. Actively maintained is, is great. We want to see that because it means that uh, the community is uh, contributing to this and, and maintaining the module code itself. In terms of the development status, um, under active development doesn't necessarily mean that the code is being developed right now, that you can't use it on a production site. It means that this is, again, uh, code is being contributed to it. it. You might see maintenance fixes here. That's where no new functionality is being added. But if there's bugs or that kind of thing, uh, developers will be, will be addressing those. In terms of the categories, remember we went browsing through administration. That's 
what happens here. This is, this is what defines that. In terms of the reported installs, here are the number of sites that are reporting back to Drupal that they've installed and are using this module. So right now we see 513. The more the better. Uh, the more sites reporting usage indicates that the module is pretty popular, it's out there, and because it's popular, there are a lot of eyes on it, more likely to have some uh, code being maintained and, and functionality added to it, problems being fixed and whatnot. That said, this isn't the, the be all and end all. Down here, you'll see there are also downloads. You don't have to report back to drupal.org that you're using a module. So you'll see that there's been 4,700 downloads, only 513 sites are reporting using it. The reason for that is could be people are doing this on testing sites, um, multiple people could be downloading repeatedly, a whole bunch of things. In terms of automated tests, this is just whether or not developers have created tests for this that are run by code to ensure that uh, the code does what it's intended to do and when there are updates, nothing gets broken. So just below that, you'll see that there's downloads. So here you have a recommended release and a development release. As I mentioned, because developers are going to be working on this, um, when they're working on things, you might have code that could potentially break and you might, might not want to use it on a production site. That's where you're going to have a development release. The recommended release, when you see this as a green background, this refers to code that is safe for your production site. It's safe to be live. Um, and this is typically the type of code that you're going to grab. You most often than not will not want to have development code on your production site because there could be bugs. In terms of this, these two tables, the date is what you also want to take a look at because this denotes when the last uh, build was created for this module. So the last um, commit was made October 20th to this clean version of 8.x 1.0. Um, and I think if you actually click on this, you can see the revision history of what's happening. So here are the release notes. Um, of, of associated with this. Again, this might be overly technical for you. Don't worry about it. Um, you can just grab the actual version from the downloads here. Now, the last thing that we want to take a look at is this right sidebar. So the maintainers for the admin module or admin toolbar, these refer to the people who have committed to the code base, right? And so right now there's only one person doing that. You can actually take a look at all the committers. You can also take a look at all their commits to see what they've actually done. And this is great if you're curious about what module development looks like. You can see how people have, have changed the code over time and it's a great way to learn. You can also look at the issues for the admin toolbar. This is also a good thing you wanna take a look at before you choose to use a module. Um, issues refer to um, tickets that people have filed to say, hey, maybe I want new documentation, maybe there's a bug, maybe there's new functionality. And you can take a look at all of these. So if we click on 39 total, you can see all of the different types of, of tickets. And so closed fix is obviously a great thing. We want to see that. Um, and then there's, there's others, right? So if we had white, this is active, closed, works as designed, right? Cannot reproduce. Uh, so this looks like it's all actively maintained because we can see when those are created and when these are updated. So this is great to see. And if you log in, you can actually create your own as well. Um, statistics you can obviously work through. Last two things, resources. More often than not on the more popular modules, you'll find resources tabs which help you to understand how to use a module or set up a module. Uh, admin toolbar is pretty straightforward, but for something like commerce, you would have extensive documentation, which is great. Um, and then development, uh, as I mentioned, you can see the patches, you can see the, the code repository, the commits, any security uh, vulnerabilities can be reported here, and then the change records. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna copy this link address and we're gonna go back to our site. And so I'll just take you to my home page. And you'll see here that I have this toolbar that's come with Drupal, uh, Drupal Core and it provides this nice extend um, link. And so when I click on extend, this is where I can actually go and add modules. And so here, what I've done ahead of time is I've gone down to the update manager and I've enabled this. So I clicked off that checkbox and I've come down to the bottom and I've clicked install. And the reason why I did that is because that module will allow you to install modules from within your own UI. So now I get this nice install module link and I can click on that and it'll take me to a new page where I can install from a URL. So I'll just go ahead and paste that and then I'll click install. So it's telling me it's already installed because I previously went through this and tested some things out. And so now when I scroll down here to admin, you'll see that I have admin toolbar, admin toolbar tools. Okay, so now you'll see that I'm in my root. My, uh, I'm using CYG 
uh, drive uh, because I'm on Windows and then I'm in my, in my D folder, WAMP, www, but I'm in D8 sandbox. This is my Drupal site. And so when you LS, you'll see all the different um, folders. Now, previously in Drupal 7, 6, and so on, you would go into the sites all modules folder and that's where's where your modules would be. In Drupal 8, they've actually changed that to make it more intuitive. There was always a modules folder right in the Drupal root, which was a little bit confusing. This is now what's being used for contributed modules. And so if I go into modules, you can see there's my admin toolbar. And if I go into see uh, admin toolbar, you'll see here are the files that are associated with this. If you want to take a look at um, the module to read the code or take a look at the sub module admin toolbar tools. So with all that said, just going to go ahead and enable these guys by checking them off and then clicking install. So now you'll see here that two modules have been enabled, admin toolbar, admin toolbar tools, which is as expected. Now, um, I'm familiar with these modules, so I know that there won't be a config page, but if say we had a, a Drupal Commerce being installed, it might have a configuration page. And so if I scroll down, I can actually uh, expand this, uh, this block. And you can see here, there's a link for help. It's potential that there could be a link for configuration. You might want to check that, or if there were permissions, uh, a link for permissions, and you could enable those as well. So I flagged those just so you're aware when you're installing new modules. Uh, but now, if we look at our site, if I hover over anything, you see I get a nice drop down uh, JavaScript menu that I can go and check everything out um, and get into deep linking without actually having to click through links multiple times and refresh multiple pages. But that's it for this video tutorial. Uh, it was just a brief introduction to modules. Hopefully it helped you. Uh, in the next video tutorial, we'll be taking a look at image styles uh, and how we can do different media setups uh, for our site when we have our pictures. So again, if this video tutorial helped you, please leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know, and we'll see you for the next video tutorial. Thanks very much for watching.